Hello, today we are going to try to fix this absolutely beautiful vintage black and white CRT CCTV screen. It is an absolutely great model because it's got a multiple inputs for a video and for the audio. So if you've got like a couple vintage device on your desk, you can just switch over here from the control panel. You don't need to change any wiring and all of that is going to be from the control panel. And we are going to try to resolve the problem and the problem is visible on the back. So let me rotate it. Here is back of the device and the problem. The problem located is over there. We've got a DC input jack that is completely destroyed. Most likely someone was trying to plug it in. It was covered by that panel and he got like a wrong size of the DC plug. Maybe the barrel inside was too thick and he forced it and it break and completely destroy that socket. To make this repair properly, we should undo all those screw that are holding the board, but the problem is some of the screw are under CRT, so it's going to be extremely painfully job to do. So I found out that after removing that panel that was over here, over there, we've got just barely enough room to access that DC socket. So I hope I will be able to replace it without actually removing the main board. Here is something that I believe is going to be a one-to-one -one replacement. And I hopefully will be able to access that from that area. Maybe we are going to use a sold desoldering wick. And let's try to do that. I add the tiny amount of flux. I've got my pliers and I'm going to try to undo all of them. So hopefully this will be possible to pull off without undoing the board. And yes, we've got our first part removed. Let's add some flux on our desoldering wick and clean that area. So let's see. And yes, that looks absolutely beautiful. We managed to clear the hole. Let's try to pull that part. And it's go absolutely beautiful. Let's try to clean it. Looks nice. And the last part, the barrel. Let me try to grab it and undo. And we've got our part extracted. And let's try to clean it. We've got it absolutely beautiful and cleaned up. So as you can see, I'm using the soldering wig. That's because there was uh, no way to insert it and get a proper suction. So even if you've got the desoldering gun, it is not always possible to use. So having more option is uh, always good. Uh, let's see, does our replacement is going to fit one to one. And looks like we've got a perfect match. Let's nicely solder it. And it looks uh, absolutely beautiful. That looks absolutely great. So let's try to 
put it back just like that does it fit properly yes it does so we've got a absolutely great success first we are going to start from the bottom just like that before i'm going to close it let's take a look what we've got inside first thing first we've got some information most likely from the manufacturer maybe it is for a screen i've got no idea what's being said over there we've got the more analog part that is quite common to a tv we've got the flyback transformer for creating a high voltage for the crt screen we've got our deflection coil and the gun i can clearly see that some components are not populated so they definitely have got a lot of different models that board is quite interesting because from look of that if you compare them both that one is much newer it's got a battery and that's most likely is going to mean that we've got a real time clock or maybe it's also going to be used for storing a configuration it looks like some board that is going to do a digital signaling i saw that this model got a zoom feature so maybe it's being done on that chip is going to be multiplexing our four inputs and create them at a single image so you are going to be able to see the four cameras at the same time so i would assume that's going to make some analog to digital conversion but maybe i'm wrong we have to take a look at that chip we would have to google that chip afterward and see because those look like a memory and we would not use them on a analog signal i'm taking a look at the capacitors i do not have a single one that is being bulged so most likely the device is going to be okay let me put the cover back case is closed so we can take a look at the back panel to see what kind of ports do we've got first is vcr this is output that go into our video recorder that is going to combine all the video signals that we see and that's going to be sent to the cassette recorder or into a digital pvr tc in that we just fixed this is a self-explaining then we've got our video inputs for four cameras we've got a video and the audio signal that are using rca but that's going to be compatible with a regular 75 ohm signal so you can get adapter for a bnc then we've got the video out most likely for other equipment and we've got a four inputs that are going to be using a as video signal so we are going to get combine a video and the audio in a one mini din plug and here is the model number i'm going to grab my video cable on one end i've got a rca and that's going to go into the camera number one on the other end i've got rca to b and c and that will go into my video signal generator and i'm going to also feed it with a dc 18 volts and we are ready to try it out i had to adjust the shutter speed on my camera but we've got it running as you can see we've got a quad look on four cameras at once on the camera number one i've got a signal from my generator if we've got a four cameras then we would be able to take a look what's going on on all of those 
but we can select any of those cameras. So this is camera number one and we've got it full screen. We can go to camera number two, number three, number four, but let's go to the camera number one. Let's change the pattern on the signal generator. So we've got something else. And now I'm sending you a different test patterns. And as you can see, it's working pretty decent. So yeah, it's looking pretty nice. We've got a couple interesting features. As you can see, we can see four cameras at once, but we can get like a primary picture plus a smaller one. So if we've got like a main hall and door, so we can see that no one is loitering around, we can have like a that configuration. We've got the main camera plus the additional as a smaller one. And we go back to our single one. The most interesting part is ability to freeze the picture. So that's most likely is being done by that board with uh, some sort of memory. And as you can see, we've got a still picture. So if that would be a person walking, then we can make a freeze frame and take a look at the face. The most interesting part is a zoom feature. So I have to find how to, how to select it. And yes, here it is. So as you can see, we've got a frame that is going to be zoom in when we want. So let me try to hit it. Let's take a look how to do it. On those buttons, we can move our zoom area. As you can see, we can move it up and down. And let me find a way to zoom in. Maybe that, yes, that's exactly. We just zoom in into that area. And as you can see, I can move it around. Let's see, does the freeze frame is working? Looks like it does not in that mode. So if we would like to see something smaller, then just take a look how beautiful it works. Let me move it, let me change a image. Maybe here it's going to be better visible. So we've got our frame over here and I zoom in and as you can see, we've got it much closer and we can move it around up and down. Absolutely beautiful feature. And the last thing, let's try to zoom it here. And it's looking absolutely beautiful. This is how psychedelic it can get. So we go like a zoom in, zoom out. That's a beautiful thing. So as you can see, we've got a beautiful fix. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find it interesting. See you next time and bye bye.